Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Kuan, Beautiful Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. There is a lot of speculation about like what the Mario movie is going to be like, how it's going to look, you know, the overall quality of it, but we've seen two trailers as of this point, and both of them look great. This movie looks phenomenal at this stage. And honestly, considering it's coming out in four months, and considering, you know, I'm a big fan of the, of the license and just like the, the level of obvious, you know, love and care put into the animations, the characters, their personalities, the story bits, uh, the stuff we've seen, all of these references to all these different properties, including Donkey Kong, which I wasn't really expecting at all going into this. I think this movie is going to be the best film of 2023, like period. Nothing's even going to come close, right? And in that, with that in mind, uh, what exactly do I expect to see from it? What is exactly my predictions? And uh, looking at these trailers, I do come away thinking that, like, yeah, this is really going to play up how Mario became Super Mario. This is going to, like, essentially go into the character's origin story. That's kind of what we've been getting at from the beginning. And uh, the implications that we've seen from the trailers and, like, uh, what we've seen with, like, uh, his inter uh, Mario's interactions with Peach is that, like, for some reason, Mario is the one that has to beat Bowser, but he's not ready yet. So Princess Peach has to, like, train him, like, in these platforming sections to, uh, to get him ready to confront Bowser. And we don't know exactly exactly why because peach doesn't seem to be kidnapped yet uh and th that is actually something that has been on my mind after the second trailer now that we ac we've actually seen peach we've seen what she like uh what she's like uh peach really does remind me a lot of the super mario adventures interpretation of the character in which she is very feisty she has a a lot more person she has a lot of personality uh, and she's not necessarily a damsel in distress all the time she is a lot more proactive i, I know a lot of people like like to praise princess peach as um the patron Paper Peach as like the definitive version of the character, and I do kind of understand why, but I think in a lot of ways, the, the Mario Adventures version, uh, the comic, is probably the best version of the character to use in a film like this, because Mario hasn't been established as the hero of the Mushroom Kingdom yet, so Peach has to do everything herself. She has to, like, fight against Bowser, and if you think back to the first trailer, where the Penguin King tried to fight Bowser and got stomped... It's very, very possible that Princess Peach might actually go through the same process in which she tries to fight bravely, but gets BTFO and Mario has to step in and save her. You know, I think that's what they're going for here is that they're making like a strong, capable female character, Peach, having her like, you know, lose, which is going to be a huge plot twist considering the, the current state of like modern cinema, and then having Mario step in to like, to save her near the end, you know, like uh, traditionally, right? It's, it's simultaneously going to like appeal to people who want Princess Peach to be more proactive, who want her to be like, have a more who wanted her to be, uh, to be a more involved leader in the Mushroom Kingdom and stuff like that, to be a more fleshed out, like, dynamic character with her own goals, motivations, aspirations, you know, personality. But it's also going to be, like, you know, harken back to what the character traditionally has been, is that, like, you know, a damsel in distress. That doesn't necessarily make her a weak, ineffectual person, because the entire movie is emphasizing that there are times where, like, she's supporting Mario and helping Mario through, like, his problems and, like, you know, learning how to, like, be a hero in the Mushroom Kingdom and stuff like that. In a way, we're going to see these two characters interact and make each other better people. In a way. Now, I've seen people, like, speculate that, like, oh, Luigi is the one that's going to be kidnapped in this game. I don't think so. Uh, I think what we're seeing is that, like, Luigi is kidnapped by Bowser at first, you know, early on in the film. Uh, you know, he's the first one to, like, have a, you know, get the Mar get Mario involved in the plot, right? And then, like, Mario goes in, you know, that, you know, Luigi gets away, and then, like, kind of, it, it's the Super Mario Brothers movie. So my, my assumption is that, like, Luigi's going to be doing stuff behind enemy lines while Mario's getting to know, like, the Mushroom Kingdom and, like, the, the, the princess and stuff like that. Like... My guess is that, like, eventually they're going to, like, get together and then beat Bowser in some way, shape, or form. That's uh, that's kind of my speculation on it. And um, the, the thing that kind of surprises me uh, about the trailer, uh, some of the implications uh, that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. You know, you know, most people are, like, focusing on the characters themselves. What about the setting? Like, the setting is, like, a weird hodgepodge of, like, different Mario continuities and and just games that really don't have anything to do with, do with each other. Because, you know, we all know this, uh, Mario has no real continuity. Like, of course, you have, like, you know, uh, the stuff that seems to harken back to the 
arcade game with like Donkey Kong's design. Uh, Donkey Kong's presence, in fact, is kind of kind of strange. And that like Cranky Kong is there. Like in the Coliseum, it seems like uh, Mar- Princess Peach is sending her champion Mario against Cranky Kong's champion DK. Like some kind of like rivalry between kingdoms kind of thing. I, I don't know why Mario would be in that situation and, and why he's getting stomped so badly <laughs> by DK. But it, it's kind of funny. It's kind of amusing. And like you know, it, it gives DK you know, some much needed, a much needed presence in the Mario universe. I think DK, you know, is out of the entire cast is one that hasn't really been utilized all that much. Like people, people complain about Daisy and Waluigi, but like, you have to understand like Donkey Kong is like the underutilized Mario character in that sense. Like ever since Donkey Kong Country, it feels like Donkey Kong is kind of off in like his own little world, even though he's technically part of the same canon, right? Donkey Kong has always been like seen as a Mario universe character, even though like the character was originally supposed to be, you know, Donkey Kong was supposed to be the important like brand name mascot character, right? Like it's interesting how it played out that way, but but, uh, you know, Jumpman became Mario, and be- Mario became the biggest mascot in gaming. And DK, even though he's had, like, a long, solid history in his own right, and, you know, I, I still think Donkey Kong Country is one of the most popular Nintendo franchises, it's um, it's nowhere near as beloved or respected as Mario in that, in that way. Uh, so seeing Donkey Kong have, like, such a strong presence is, like, very, very... Makes me very happy. I'm a big Donkey Kong fan. I'm really glad to see see the character get a lot of appreciation. But we're also seeing, like, Yoshis. We're seeing them in the wild. We're seeing, like, penguins. We're seeing, like, a Peach specifically says galaxies when describing, like, all of these different locations. And that, that kind of makes me wonder, like, that is very interesting terminology because, you know, we, we kind of – we've – in most in most continuities, uh, in most most of these games, like typically you're in the Mushroom Kingdom. Like sometimes you go outside of it, and sometimes you go elsewhere. But like for the most part, like you know you you have the established location, the Mushroom Kingdom or the Mushroom World, and you kind of just go through the motions there. Like you you just kind of take it for granted that like everything is from like the same the same galaxy exactly. But like it feels like they're going in the Super Mario Galaxy route where you have like a lot of different like things spread out against like the cosmos with like wildly different locations and like I with wildly different locations and like things to see. And that's the thing that interests me about this, like galaxies, like that specific terminology, like why specifically would they say galaxies? Like Rosalina's presence has not been acknowledged at all in this film. So it makes me think that like, she might appear near the end as like some court kind of like, I don't know, like, cameo appearance and, like, some crazy thing. Like, we might actually get, like, a really cool, like, Super Mario Galaxy kind of conclusion to this, honestly. Like, we've seen some some indication of that. You know, we've seen Rainbow Road. We've seen, like, you know, some shots of, like, stars, you know, Peach's dialogue. Like, it seems... It seems like we're going in that direction, but, like, what does it mean? Like, what does it mean in the context of the film? Because I think it's wrong to look at this in context of the games or even, like, the the comic, uh, the Super Mario Adventures comic, because it very, very much is trying to be its own thing, you know? Like, people are trying to spin this as being like, oh, man, it's it's going woke, it's going down this path. No, it's it's being creative. That's the thing, is that they're taking this film, this IP that's beloved around the world, and they're trying to convert it into a different medium. You know, they're trying to take these characters that everyone knows and making them, like, unique and dynamic. Bowser, I think, is a lot more threatening in this movie than I think we've ever seen him before. You know, like, typically in something like Paper Mario, they they kind of play up the fact that he's, like, kind of a chump. And he's kind of, like, he can't really compete with, like, some other villains, especially in, like, the Thousand Year Door. They kind of play up, like, the humorous aspect. And, you know, that, that's, that's what makes it funny. Like, th- that version of the character is legit, and I really, really appreciate it. Like, uh, you know... You have, like, you know, games like the Mario and Luigi games where he gets, like, shafted entirely in favor of other villains, right? Uh, And you have, like, you know, the standard Bowser depiction. This seems to be Bowser at his most threatening. It it really does feel that way. And that, like, Bowser feels like a genuine threat to, like, those around him. He's not just kidnapping Peach. He's going around fighting fighting other kingdoms for whatever reason, Um. Like, I I can't imagine that there's a superstar in the Penguin Castle. So, like, we actually, considering, like, the, the cut between, like, the Penguin fight scene and, like, the 
uh, him claiming the star, it's possible that the star isn't like something he claims until later, you know, like maybe he's just fighting the penguins just because, or because they're sitting in the way of like his goals or, or whatever. Like why exactly is Bowser fighting other kingdoms? You know, like is, is, is the star in the mushroom kingdom? That, that seems to be like the thing I, I'm expecting to see is that like the star is actually in the mushroom kingdom. Bowser gets peach. He gets the star and he becomes like invincible. We don't actually know what the star does in this, in this continuity. Um, it, it could be anything. It could make him invincible. It could have like, you know, be a, just a standard power star. There might be like more power stars hidden in the castle that he misses, you know, like in Super Mario 64. There could be like all sorts of explanations for this. You know, it's not exactly consistent what exactly power stars do. In Odyssey, they're not even called power stars. They're called, they're just power moons that are in like the shape of a star, which doesn't make any sense, but <laughs> to me anyway, um, like there are, I think people are, putting too much stock into what they're seeing in the trailers, essentially. I think there's a lot more going on here than I think we're being led to believe. Um, you know, for one thing, people are trying to call Mario like a comic relief gag character who's not actually going to accomplish anything and that Peach is going to like save the day or whatever. I I don't think so. You can kind of see that Mario is already like taking charge in certain situations. Like he fights DK, even though he gets his ass kicked. Like he goes through these, through these motions of like, you know, you know, being a lot more active than I think a lot of other animated series protagonists. Like we've seen a lot of like instances of this, of, of like, yeah, a, a lot of it, a lot of instances of him being like, yeah, I, I have to do this. I have to like save the Mushroom Kingdom or like, you, you know, like he clearly seems to be like embracing the hero role, even if he's not like, you know, ready for it yet. And like, I, I think in the end, he will kind of acknowledge that, uh, he will actually become the hero that he's like meant to be. That that's kind of what I'm I'm expecting to see from this. I'm um I'm curious how this is going to play out. Uh, people are speculating that like Mario is like the the chosen one uh, of like some prophecy or something, which actually does uh, co align a lot with like a uh, Kamek's dialogue in Yoshi's Island, where he says that like Mario will one day grow to be a threat to the Koopa kingdom. And that's why he's being, he's sending all these, these, um, why he's, why he's sending those guys to kidnap him, right? From Yoshi. Like that's, that's why Yoshi's Island happens is that like Kamek is trying to stop the Super Mario Bros from growing up and, you know, uh, causing trouble for Bowser in the future. Right. Um, like it's not unprecedented to see that, you know, it's not unprecedented to see like Luigi be kidnapped instead of Peach. Like nothing we've seen from these trailers is in any way worrisome or like seems to indicate a lack of quality. If anything, this seems like above. This seems like way above what I was expecting, honestly. Like back in the day, back when this was first announced, like I saw a lot of people bitching about the studio, and at the time, I assumed it was just people like, oh yeah, big animation geeks who really don't like this particular studio. Like, I don't consider myself an animation fanatic, so I don't really know anything about, like, you know, the studios or or who runs them or, like, who what is considered a good or bad studio. I kind of took people's word for it that, like, oh, man, this game, it's going to be disappointing. No, uh, that, that is clearly not the case, honestly. Now, the big thing now is, like, over is like over hating on like Chris Pratt's voice to the point where like, it's kind of become detrimental to talking about all the film's positive aspects. And, and, and really Chris Pratt's voice isn't that bad. Honestly, let's be real here for a second. There's nothing wrong with it. it like acting isn't that it's not hard to act. Okay. Like it's not impressive to act. So you really need to stop like acting like, Oh man, like he could have done more effort into it. No, it's not, it's not that hard to do a voice. There's nothing, I, I much I put much more emphasis on like the on the environments, the visuals, the story, and the music. Like voice acting is the absolute like least last thing I would I would focus on when it comes to a film like this. Like I don't care about the actors. So in this sense, um, complaining about Chris Pratt's voice, I think is like has been played out really honestly before we, we even saw the trailer. Honestly, like I am tired of seeing people complain about Chris Pratt's voice. Like it needs to stop, you know, like I am just sick and tired of seeing people try and pretend that like this acting decision is going to ruin the film. It is that just obviously isn't the case. 
It isn't going to happen, and you need to stop. People are just going to get used to it. In fact, when the movie comes out, I expect a lot of people will like it. You know, it's a big, big reason why I don't take it seriously. It's no different than complaining about new Batman actors or, like, just any other just bullshit fan and just, eh, we deserve better. Like, no, they, they, they came to their decision, and we have to respect that. Uh, there is nothing, like, there is fundamentally, like, nothing about the Mario Bros. movie that looks, like, in any way, like, bad or poorly poorly done. You know, like, uh, the character models themselves, I am growing attached to them. I thought they kind of look if, kind of iffy at first. I kind of would have preferred them to look more like the games. But, like, seeing them in motion, seeing the comedy they're going for, seeing, like, you know, how cute Peach is, like, yeah, it is working for what they're doing. Uh, it, it's quite different than other animated films. And you know what? This is quite different than other animated films in general. It seems to have a real epic scope to it. It is an actually good adaption of a, of a popular video game IP. It is, you know, everything gamers would want in a video game adaption. Like, you know, that that is kind of my thoughts going away on this, is, coming away from this, is that I think the people who are, like, complaining about this aren't actual fans. I think actual gamers are really excited for Super Mario Bros. the movie, while, like, the plebs are just whining about whatever they possibly can. 